Are you ready to take your aerial reconnaissance to new heights? Meet Monkey Works, your go-to source for cutting-edge aviation analysis and intelligence updates. It's all happening right on Patreon. With four tiers, you get to choose what level suits your needs. From discounts at the workshop to ad-free content, you'll have access to live sit reps, Q&As, and video archives. Monkey Works Patreon isn't just a subscription. It's a doorway to unparalleled insights, exclusive content only available here, and a strong community of like-minded individuals who share the same passion for intelligence analysis. Hey folks, Millspec Ops Monkey here. Listen, I am thrilled to invite you to our exclusive community over here on Patreon. All right. Hey, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here is going to be your big boy sit rep. It is 7-16-2024 coming to you live here from the Monkey Lounge in the great state of Texas. As we get into the deets, let's just get straight into it. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things, including this attempt that just took place. I'm going to point out a couple little nuances that I think are very odd. Um, and, uh, but we're not going to go into the details around it because uh, this platform on the tube will certainly get me dinged. So um, if you're in the Q&A afterwards, uh, that will not be on the tube. And uh, for the Patreon community, uh, we will basically talk in detail about a lot of things that I can't really say here. So, okay, let's jump over here to the mini. Uh, as we get into the details of the sky, we are in Skyglass. Again, this is the best app you could possibly imagine on the planet uh, because it's just, it allows you to really investigate a lot of different things. So um, but if you just want to look at what is on the screen right now, the um, we're sitting at mill aircraft only, 270. Mind you, I have already stripped out all the trainers. Uh, let's look at H60 Blackhawks, uh, a very large amount up. I will add that one to my quiver. For some reason, it's not in there. Um, but uh, this is you know, 41. So you have to ignore these and these. These are probably just kind of bundle into the training aspect of it. But uh, Northeast, as always, is packed. And then, of course, up here in this general area, um, you can see, eh, you know, that's just that's a lot of a lot of H60s. All right, let me back it up. And then the other thing that we have a lot of that are currently up are the KC-135s. 32 air refuelers up. Again, this is a big indicator on fighter activity. Okay. And let me see if we can add, if the Pegasus doesn't show up here, then it's a pretty low number. We won't really worry about, there it is. No, it's not a low number. It's 10 of those. So uh, you count these 32 plus the 10, we're at 42. That is a very elevated number of air refuelers. Again, big indicator of fighter activity. We'll go over to Europe and see if we've got a lot going on there. I got two. Okay. So back to CONUS with the lion's share of air refuelers. We'll take those guys off our screen for a second. The other piece too, H-47 Chinooks banana copters. Most of those are going to be in England that are currently up. So we won't even go there. We'll just take that offline. And then, uh, well, we're talking tankers. So let's just take a look at what has happened over the last five days since we last got together. Uh, the big piece are these long uh, traces that you see. Those are an indicator that uh, we're probably moving fighters uh, from one location to another. Uh, okay. And then you can see also, you know, all of their little marshalling points down to the Southern border, the Northern border off and out into the Caribbean, something happening there and very strange down in South America to see that. And then of course, what I want you to pay close attention to here are the amount of trace lines going across the Atlantic. That is probably because we are just moving a boatload of fighters and deploying them over to that area. It could be the F-16s we're giving them too. We're sending some stuff over. There ain't no two ways about that. When you see those long traces, because fighters can't make it across the drink, they have to have air refueler go with them. So when you see a lot of those, that's a lot of fighters. All right. And then, of course, you can see out over the Black Sea, out over the Mediterranean, pretty active. Right. The interesting one is this, headed down into this part of Africa. We've seen that a couple times now. And I'm going to show you something with the Omni perspective here in a minute of the flight coming out of Africa going to Port-au-Prince, Haiti, which I find very interesting. 
Okay. And then you can see a little activity there in Australia and over into Asia. All right. Okay. Let's talk the watch list. Now, the key to this, uh, because we're going to segue into the next piece, see these balloons? These are Mill Intel balloons, DOD, uh, called Thunderbolts, right? And um, they are, uh, I don't know, I think they're doing a mesh network, maybe getting some software updates or something. They're all kind of tied together, not literally tied together, but connected. Um, now, got some Intel in Southern California. But um, you can see a little B-52 rolling out of, out of uh, Barksdale, headed eastbound. And got some little hidden nuggets in there, some NOAA flights, right? Uh, you've got uh, the Graybirds getting up, airborne. And R-135 kind of over Atlanta, which is that's a pretty unique. I don't see that too often. I see a lot of E-3 Century stuff and activity there. And then this just big mess of fighter, or sorry, tanker aircraft over uh, the Northeast. Um, and then, of course, check this one out. This is, uh, that's an Intel bird, all right? ISR, as we say, Intel Surveillance Reconnaissance Military version, and then a couple air refuelers there. So now we're talking ISRs. I want to point something out. We've, we, we keep showing you, um, well, let's get into Europe first. Notice the flight that's out over the North Sea off to the eastern side of England. The usual areas that we typically see running across the, the forward flank of Europe, and then down into Mediterranean. Now, this is a transition. Something just came out of probably Hunter Army Airfield and went across the drink. But look at this pattern, all right? Just pause it for one second. I want you to just pay attention uh, to the, the big, long grids that kind of cover out over the Midwest, um, up into Montana, Wyoming, et cetera. I believe that because we have the balloons getting some type of an upgrade, probably offline, given their locations are all very close to each other, more than likely the, the Intel aircraft are filling the void or the gap in collecting over the United States, the data collection piece, right? And so that may be why we're seeing this real broad brush of the intelligence flights in those same areas, just kind of running where we would normally see the balloons spread out. And um, it just kind of tells you exactly the capability of those balloons, because if the intel community is filling the gap while these things are going through their little maintenance stuff, yeah, okay. Now, this is the FBI. I'm pointing this out because uh, one thing, in 721AL, the one that we have a go team, has flown down to look like Key West, and we haven't seen it since. Been there for a little bit of time. But see these flights? That's on the day after the Trump issue, okay? And um, flying up, obviously, going into the area to do their investigation, right? Cover their tracks, probably. Um, but let's just do this. Since we're talking about Butler, Pennsylvania, let's get into this piece, which is going to be the Trump segment. Now, the interesting thing that I find here is I've looked at his flights over the last 10 days or so, and uh, I will tell you, it's kind of strange. He's been out to Southern California doing some um, basically I, I campaigning, I guess, right, trying to raise funds. Uh, but then you see this one into Canada. I thought that was really odd to see our president go international for fundraising. Uh, I didn't even know you could do that. It's kind of strange. So... Anyway, maybe there's some Americans up there that like to pony up, right? But it's a data point for you because, um, you know, we're watching kind of where he goes and what he does. <laughs> we're all obviously concerned. Mind you, this, oh, well, I mean, this has already happened, so I'm not uh, disclosing his location or anything like that. I'm just pointing out the fact that he's still doing fundraising things, and I, I, I just find it interesting. I don't know if you saw the data point where Elon Musk basically came in and said he's going to give $45 million a month to uh, the super PAC for Trump between now and the election. So uh, that is a giant contribution. So uh, definitely good, good on him. Okay, now let's move on. So we talked about that, uh, the Trump aspect. We're going to get back into that segment in just a minute because I'm going to talk about a couple just different things that I found interesting. Um, when it came to the attempt, okay? All right, first off, let's look at the SIG Intel. 
right? This is uh, over the last five days. Remember, these are gathering cell data. Remember where we just showed you all the Intel flights that were out in that same area? Uh, there's something out there that they're watching and tracking very closely. And then, of course, you can see Black Sea all the way up there near Latvia, et cetera, right? Remember, R-135 can track an object the size of a soccer ball, but this primary... Uh, this aircraft is primarily uh, primarily has sounded out, man. Uh, they're doing signal until they're gathering cell tower data, et cetera. Okay. Now, see this right here with the nuke sniffer. This is a different type of R-135, but just notice its location right over the heart of America, right? And you get down. Uh, you saw some stuff there in Texas, um, but uh, it's you know this is looking for for nukes. Right, and then you see the one down into South America. We've got one that's going back and forth from Caracas to that location um, on a frequent basis. So, all right, this is gonna be your E6 Takamo Navy Bird. Take charge, move out. That's a picture of it over there on uh, off to my side. Just note the locations. I'm talking to nukes uh, on the submarines. All right, now we got one in Europe. We know it's there, just not seeing it flying anywhere. So he hasn't come back. I've been watching. Let's talk AWACS, advanced warning. So this is, again, into the nuke aspect. Nothing over in Japan, and uh, we got a little bit of activity down in Australia, as always. Um, over France, Summer Olympics maybe, right? Closely monitoring that situation. Now look over the United States. These kind of these long draw, uh, you know, flights out and then back. Uh, a couple little marshalling points, but then that little long line out and back. Again, out over the Gulf of Mexico. You don't do that unless you're worried about somebody parking a nuke out there off, you know, the Florida, <laughs> Texas, uh, all of that southeast shoreline. So, okay, last one. We're going to talk Ruskies for a second. And uh, the interesting piece to this is I want to just point out uh, is not the fact that you see them going down towards the Black Sea, but look at this activity off of Israel's coastline. And then look at this going down to Armenia, I believe it is. And, uh, you know, we know they've got northern Africa locked up. They're, they're in Libya and all the way across, uh, even over into the Egypt side of the house. Okay. All right. Into the news cycle. Now, this is, uh, let me just show you the Omni flights. Okay. Again, remember. This is a conglomerate. It's not just Omni. It's a couple other airlines tied into this. But these are the ones that are moving the migrants sh straight past the border into the interior of the United States. There's one of the aircraft over there you can see. But um, I do believe they're putting people in Hawaii. All right. Very expensive, but I believe they're putting people there. Now, the other piece, too, is notice all the stops in Central America, down towards Panama, down in South America, right? They're not taking people and, and deporting them. They're picking them up, saving them the walk, and they're flying them straight into the interior of our country, and then they send them to their forever homes. Okay. Now, the other piece, too, is um, I just notice that pinch point right there in Istanbul. I think we're putting troops in there, but uh, they, they seem to kind of all tie and dial in right there into Ramstein in the center of Germany there, or not center, but all right. And then you see a little bit there in Southeast Asia. Okay. All right. Back to our mini. We talked about that. If you look at the C-17, so long transports, Globemaster, all right? Here's a picture of it right over there. You can see, um, again, hot and heavy into the Pacific area out of Hawaii off of uh, the west or the left coast, as we call it. Some broken traces down into the Caribbean. What I don't see, I don't see anything going into Haiti like we saw last time. All right. But uh, I do see a lot of traffic headed over to Europe. And most of that is going into Ramstein. All right. But then you see the exact same thickness of the traces coming out of Ramstein, headed towards Syria, Iraq, et cetera, but they're all broken traces, probably because they don't want to transmit as they're headed over that area. Um, more than likely, we would be able to see where those traces go, but they probably kill those transponders as to not get shot down as they head over those regions. So anyway, pretty active for the last five days. Okay. 
Let's get into the new stuff now. We've talked Omni for just a minute. This one I thought was interesting. Notice this is coming out of Senegal over to Port-au-Prince. I don't know what's going on here, um, but if they go back that direction, I, then I, I think it would be immigrant-related. They may very well be taking some, uh, potentially some troops and bringing them in here, right? But uh, just a very odd flight pattern. Again, Omni, okay? All right, we talked big boy. Let's talk little boy. Was that code? I don't know. But I will say, if you're familiar with the little boy, that's a nuclear bomb that was dropped on to Japan. And um, the fact that I, I know I'm not the only one that found it very, very odd that they would call, Flashbang would call uh, a news conference the big boy conference. Very strange. Um, was that... Uh, was he tipping his hat to what was about to happen? Um, you know, maybe. Uh, the other piece, too, I thought was interesting was when he actually made the comment, uh, and I'm talking about Biden, uh, it's time to put Trump in the crosshairs. I, you know, these all seem like uh, either code or some type of, uh, you know, signal uh, for sure. Very, very odd. Um, but let's get into uh, first. Let's just go over here to Flashbang, and I'll just show you uh, his schedule today. He's, he is trying to get this vote back. I think he's lost it. I'll, it'll be interesting to see how many people even show up. Uh, but yeah, this is this is all just panhandling. He realizes that he has lost that base. He's tried to do everything he can. Um, so uh, the now well, let me back that up real fast. Do you see this right here? He participates in an interview with uh, the, this this guy. I would not be shocked if these interviews are taped and highly edited. Okay, just putting that out there. Just putting it out. Okay, let's talk the Trump aspect here for a minute. This is Butler. This was, so they did have an actual TFR over for um, that spot, July 13th, right? And um, it was only a two-mile TFR, very, very small, but uh, they had one over there. Now, I will tell you, when I got into... Skyglass, and I started looking at the event and um, the center point. Very hard to see because it is in black, but if you just go to the center point of the picture, um, that is Butler. Okay. These aircraft were at the time of the trigger pull. Okay. And so um, they are well, well outside of the TFR side of the house. So I don't see anything. What, I, what disturbed me about the look when I started to investigate what was in the skies at that time was the lack of anything. I, I didn't see any, uh, I just, I saw nothing. No H60s, no kind of overwatch or top cover. Typically you'd have some type of helo or something around making sure they got eyes on the ground or whatever it may be. Just a total lack of that. So that was a gap in security in my opinion. But then you get back over here and you get into some of the deets. Look at this right here. This uh, They're saying here that police were stationed below the shooter who was allegedly spotted nearly 30 minutes before, all right? You got somebody, you know, suspicious going on. Now, the other piece, too, I will tell you when I talk to my security, um, and you've seen me do a, a few videos with Ben in the past, he is a former Army sniper. He is on the list, just down from Chris Kyle, okay? Um, and he was a SWAT team member, and he trained SWAT teams from a sniper perspective, Okay. So when I talk with him, the fact that this guy came off his gun when the shots started coming off uh, was unheard of. Uh, it, according to my guy, uh, when you see it, shots are fired, you don't come off your gun. You basically dial in on your target and you uh, eliminate the threat. If you come off your gun, you're dead. That's basically his words, not mine. But, uh, but yeah, this is uh, just one of those deals uh, when, you know, why did you allow him to have five shots? Listen to the cadence. Go back and listen to the cadence. The very last shot that you hear, that last pop in the cadence, was the threat being eliminated. But these guys watched him the entire time. There were reports on the ground. Now, the other interesting piece is, and this is coming from secondary reports, is that uh, they're saying there was a second shooter up here in this tower. So... Um, I don't know 
about all that, but I will say that's a pretty clean line of sight, and it's definitely from an elevated position. The fact that they don't have snipers on every one of these roofs or law enforcement or something, the fact they had no aerial coverage, uh, it just shows you there were some significant gaps in the security that day. Speaking of this, Secret Service team for Trump was mostly temporary replacements. Now, where have we heard similar things like this in the past? Yeah, when JFK was taken out, right? Uh, the security detail that day was uh, skinny down to a very much smaller profile. They put him in an open car, put him into a corner that had required them to slow down, that allowed them to have time to get their shots off. Same thing here. Gaps in security. This is straight up B-team stuff, okay? Um, and that's according to not only my guy, but uh, Eric Prince. Same thing. Gaps. This, to me, reeks of an inside job, okay? All right. Let's talk no TAMs for a minute. You'll see everything looks kind of the norm. Hawaii is pretty busy, uh, but I'm not seeing any boxes that kind of catch my eye off the top. Uh, looks like a rocket box up here, a missile box, but uh, everything looks to be the same as we've been watching here as of the last year. So, Okay, but let's go over here to U.S. and you can see this is for the RNC. This is flashbang. We've got somebody uh, here actively. I don't know who that is, but that is a very large VIP box over Vegas. But it's uh, the through now, I guess. So last couple days, I don't know. Maybe it's flashbang. It's a big enough box to be flashbang. We know it's not Trump. At least don't think it is. Okay, now let's look at. Biggs Army Airfield. We got nothing on the board for them. I had a f one flight that left Biggs and was headed to Hunter. And then uh, these are your camber flights for today. Only three of them up, but these are all troop movers. You can see MD-11, 5.7, 6.7. All right, moving on. Uh, you can see here that uh, the Brits kind of light. In fact, it's light all the way around. The, the AWACS flights over Europe are lighter than what we typically see. I don't know. Something's amiss. Uh, but uh, here we go. Looks like you got one coming out of uh, to the northeast headed back to England. Another one on the board here. Looks like that is um, just not showing on the map. So, okay. This is going to be Ramstein. And let me see what we got here. That's the Czech Air Force. Interesting. Got some R's in there. Those are going to be helos more than likely. Uh, H-60 Blackhawks. And then this uh, C-17, this spar, that's a dignitary coming in. So you got a blue and white rolling back in. Now the big key takeaway is what I've said before. Um, got this one on the schedule for 747 coming in. This Omni 767-300 going to JFK out of Ramstein. That's because we're picking people up. We're bringing them onto the military base, and then we're processing them, and they're going abroad. So there's, some are flying out of Frankfurt, et cetera, but... This one right here, this is more than likely immigrants coming straight directly from Ramstein Air Force Base to JFK. All right, RZE Poland. Uh, I see just a couple things. Western Global MD-11 coming in from Washington, Dulles. Interesting location that it is coming out of. Uh, let me go down a little further. Got a camber flight in there, another camber flight in there. Uh, this one's a large, bo a wide body. Oh, this is wide body too, MD-11, coming out of Rickenbacker. All right, and then let me just see. I've got some interesting talks when, we, when it gets to these, this uh, Zelensky piece. All right, so just stand by because we're getting ready to get into the deets on this. It's absolutely crazy. Um, uh, by the way, that's Putin. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but um, tongue-in-cheek. Okay. Zelensky suddenly reverses, saying that uh, Russia should attend the Ukrainian summit. He is trying to get peace brought in now. All of a sudden, I think he's realized that time is running out. If Trump gets in, he is his goose is cooked because Russia will come in. They'll probably take Ukraine, and they will probably take him out. Okay, So now he's realized uh, we're running out of time. The U.S. isn't going to do anything. Um, so I've got to try to push for peace because if I don't, and then uh, once Trump gets in, uh, he sees the writing on the wall. Uh, he knows he's, too, he's toast. Okay, Armenia. 
Armenia, sorry, uh, host joint drills with U.S. forces. And um, this, I actually think I called Armenia earlier. Um, Algeria was what I was meaning to say when I was talking about the African side of the house. But remember, Armenia Armenia is actually been in conflict with Azerbaijan, right? So um, the fact that we're putting in there for a joint military drill is probably uh, to help kind of stave off the pro-Russian offensive there that uh, we, you know, we're trying to just contain the whole area, all right? All right, same thing with Serbia and Kosovo. We were very worried about those two locations. So, all right, check this out. Pentagon issues Ukraine ATACM's warning. Uh, in essence, all they're saying is, hey, look, we are not authorizing you to basically shoot these off into the interior of Russia, saying don't do it. At least that's what they say here. But let's go to the other side of the coin where they say the West is giving Ukraine positive signals on strikes deep inside Russia. That's coming from Zelensky himself. Looks like the cat is actually out of the bag, really not listening. Um, but it's probably just an idle threat because they say if he does that, it's going to spark a conflict very big, very fast. Okay. Okay. Russia's giant 6,000-pound glide bomb seen launched from an Su-34 for the first time. This is kind of interesting. Very similar to the Hawk system that the P-8 drops, where it uh, basically deploys probably a little bit of a drag chute uh, to get things stabilized, and the wings come out for glide, and then it's got GPS to take it to its course. That is a massive, massive bomb. 6,600-pound 6, bomb. is uh, that's, a, that's a big boom, okay? So anyway, you can just see images here as it drops it um, out of this. You can see here. I can imagine that aircraft really feels that bomb release, that much weight. That's a lot. Okay, here we go. U.S.-British warplanes launch a heavy retaliatory, retaliatory attack on Yemen. I, I'd much like the big boy conference, I am tongue-tied. I, I, I Just absolutely crazy today. My brain is firing. My tongue is not. So I do apologize. Okay, U.S.-British warplanes launch heavy retaliatory attacks on Yemen. This big takeaway is uh, that uh, here, here's your thing. It says that uh, this is CENTCOM coming out saying they destroyed five uncrewed vessels and three drones. Now, you go down a little further and you can see the Yemenis are basically saying 57 people were killed, 87 wounded. But count the number. Completely different than what the U.S. says. 570 airstrikes carried out by the U.S. and U.K. in Yemen um, since the start of the Western campaign. Now, this, uh, again, that's the total number, but still, just based on what they, they said they did, 57 people were killed, 87 wounded, in addition to five uncrewed, uncrewed vessels. So I don't know where they hit the people and three drones. They must have been docked or something. So, all right, we'll move on from that and let's get into this. So it looks like the Eisenhower is basically back to the United States after a nine-month deployment in the Red Sea area. And uh, I'm sure they are all glad to be home. We're glad to have them back, but uh, here you are. So, okay, that, folks, is going to do it for our sit rep today. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. We will continue to keep eyes on all of this stuff going on, but um, something certainly stinks of an inside job when it comes to what we just witnessed. Um, not a shocker, but it is certainly uh, something we got to just, you, you got to take it as a data point and recognize that uh, we're up against some seriously evil things. Okay. All right, listen, keep that powder dry and stay frosty. We'll talk soon. God bless. Monkey out. In the heat of the moment, precision and excellence are paramount. It's a creed we live by, both in service and beyond. Our beans are sourced from the finest regions, roasted with perfection and packed with care. Whether you prefer whole beans or ground coffee, Operator Espresso delivers a cup that's unmatched. Whether you're sharing stories with fellow veterans or gearing up for a demanding day, Operator Espresso is there to fuel your mission. Operator Espresso is more than just coffee. It's a tribute to excellence. Join us in our mission. Experience the difference. 
taste the honor. <laughs>